Hello everyone, welcome back to the session on metabolism. We'll be continuing with the oxidation of amino acids. And uh, in the previous uh, presentations, we looked into the oxidation of amino acids through the uh, conversion of amino group, that is alpha amino group of amino acid. Okay, in this presentation, we'll be looking into the other two uh, like ways or methods by which the amino acids get oxidized or degraded. Uh, the second one uh, on the row, it is degradation of carbon framework of amino acids. So during um, amino acid catabolism or the degradation, the hydrocarbon part of the amino acid, it gets broken down and ultimately it gets converted to products that get uh, into the uh, Krebs cycle. Okay, so we can see what are the various uh, amino acids and what are the products produced during the degradation of carbon framework of the specific amino acid. Okay, here you can see the first one, the isoleucine, leucine, lysine, tryptophan. It ultimately gets converted to acetyl coenzyme A and then it will enter the Krebs cycle. Okay, now the second one here, we can see glutamine, uh, the glutamate, histidine, ornithine, prolin, arginine. These... <coughs> amino acids it will get converted to alpha ketoglutaric acid while methionine threonine um, isoleucine and valine it will get converted finally to succinyl coenzyme a through methyl melonyl coenzyme a and then we have as the phenyl alanine and tyrosine getting converted to fumarate or even we can see them being converted to acetyl coenzyme a okay then aspartin and aspartate being converted to oxaloacetate. Then uh, glycine, serine, cysteine, alanine and tryptophan getting converted to pyruvate which will undergo oxidative decarboxylation later to produce acetyl coenzyme. Okay, so these, uh, all these are one or in one way or the other being um, part of the Krebs cycle. So finally it will enter the Krebs cycle. Now we can see which are the major products here. It is acetyl coenzyme, uh, alpha ketoglutarate, succinyl coenzyme, fumarate, and oxaloacetate. So these are the uh, five major products produced during the degradation of carbon framework of the different kinds of amino acids. Okay. Next is decarboxylation of amino acids. Now, decarboxylation, as the name suggests, it is the removal of carbon dioxide. Uh, from the amino acid with the formation of corresponding biological amines. Okay, so it is the enzymatic removal of carboxyl group, the COOH part, alpha carboxyl group, as carbon dioxide. And this is very important in the production of biological amines from amino acids. Okay, amines are produced, biologically produced biological amines. Okay, the enzymes which are involved, it is decarboxylases, you can see here, and this required the coenzyme. Uh, Again, pyridoxyl phosphate. Okay, so decarboxylation of amino acids it results in the formation of corresponding biogenic amines. For example, decarboxylation of histidine it will result in the formation of histamine, and decarboxylation of tyrosine it will result in the formation of tyramine. Okay, so here you can see what happens. So this is the alpha amino acid and the alpha carboxyl group. From there, carbon dioxide is uh, released okay so what happens co2 is getting released here so it becomes ch2 here okay so you have r ch2 nh2 which is an amine right so this is a this table it shows the biological amines produced from various uh what you call amino acids okay so we can see here that the decarboxylation um for example uh, the hist histidine to histamine it requires the enzyme histidine decarboxylase okay and decarboxylation of uh, uh, like uh, glutamic acid glu by glutamate decarboxylase so all these are very specific the amino acids okay so we can see here the serine it will give rise to ethanolamine on decarboxylation which is uh, used for uh, forming the choline okay i hope you remember the when we studied about the lipids it is a part of the um, uh, lipid uh, by chemistry, isn't it? Choline is being choline as well as the ethanolamine. It is being used for the synth uh, synthesis of various kinds of lipids. Now, glutamate it gets converted to gamma amino butyric acid, or we commonly refer as GABA, which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. Histidine on decarboxylation by histidine decarboxylase produces histamine. 
histamine is a vasodilator and it promotes gastric HCL and pepsin synthesis. Okay. Uh, phenylalanine, it gets converted to dopamine. Uh, dopamine is again involved uh, as metabolic precursor for the um, epinephrine and norepinephrine. Then tyrosine, it gets converted to tyramine, which is a vasoconstrictor. So it actually what happens was a constrictor. It actually increases the blood pressure, isn't it? So tryptophan, it gets converted to uh, tryptamine, serotonin, and melatonin. Uh, the serotonin, melatonin, they are involved in circadian rhythms. Also, it stimulates cerebral activity. Then uh, we can see that the uh, blood pressure is elevated by the uh, bioamines produced from tryptophan. Okay. Then cysteine, it gets converted to taurine. Uh, taurine, it is a constant of the bile acid. Uh, uh, when you study the, uh, what do you call the physiological aspect of uh, the liver, you can see that it secretes bile. Okay, bile, bile pigments and bile salts are there. Among that, taurine is a very important constituent in the formation of the bile. Okay, so this is about the, um, um, what do you call the carboxylation. We also saw the degradation of the carbon uh, main part, root, the framework of amino acids, what happens. Uh, and what happens when the amino acids, it undergoes decarboxylation. It produces biogen biogenic amines. And we also saw the importance of biogenic amines in the biological system. Okay. So that's about the, uh, uh, what you call the complete metabolism of amino acids. Uh, the metabolism of amino acids, we can uh, like uh, study under three categories. That is one is the oxidation of amino group, uh, or sorry, what you call a conversion of amino group. Then the degradation of the carbon framework and then the decarboxylation. The conversion of alpha amino group, it involves deamination, uh, like transamination, transdeamination. Uh, deamination, we studied it under oxidative deamination and non-oxidative deamination. Uh, then we have is the, uh, what you call, transamination. We saw that it is a reversible transfer of amino group from one amino acid to a keto acid, which results in the formation of a new keto acid and a amino acid, right? And the being catalyzed by amino transferases. Then we uh, also mentioned the transdeamination. Transdeamination, it is oxidative deamination coupled with transamination process. Okay. Then we have the uh, decarboxylation which we study in this presentation. So this is, uh, with this, we will be completing, concluding the um, metabolism of proteins, oxidation of amino acids. Okay, fine. Thank you.